Our beloved game, StarCraft II, has not had a legitimate balance patch in about two years, which when you consider that the prime of Wings of Liberty ran for about two years, that is staggering. Think about like those two timetables where you had the beginning of Wings of Liberty from the beta, from Literal Parasite having super long range and costing way less energy, the one supply roach, the 100% salvage bunker, the stem build time, the warp gate research time. You had all those different patches just in the first few months of the game. And for the past couple years of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void, you've had nothing, nothing, no patches, a tardy ass milk toast cookie cutter map pool and a lot of people were speculating we might never get another balance patch again people were really really tired of the boring stale meta game and they wanted reprieve in the form of a balance patch we finally got it here so let me talk about the changes shield battery the starting energy is being reduced from 100 to 50 outside of the next field now this is supposed to say nexus but obviously for about four years now blizzard has had one lousy intern covering the entirety of the starcraft 2 scene so it took him a while to code this patch to change those values in the code and it took him a while to hammer off this little post which that's it i yeah, just scrolled up and down if you remember back in the day whenever we would get balance posts, they would come with a paragraph of explanation. We're changing the bunker build time because we're having, we're seeing that Zergs are having a hard time getting their natural expansions up consist, excuse me, consistently. And we think that this change will enable Zergs to be a little more stable in the early game. That sort of thing. We don't get shit for the explanation. This motherfucker didn't even proofread this joint. So. When this says starting energy reduced from 100 to 50 outside of the nexus field, the nexus field is whenever a shield battery is close enough to a nexus to where it can be boosted, where it can be shield battery overcharged. Meaning that if you do these really aggressive, abusive, aggressive shield battery rushes, I know I said aggressive twice, I mean you're like literally building 20 buildings at the base of the ramp. It doesn't get more, much more aggressive than that. But these players who do these shield battery cheeses where they'll build a bunch of batteries at the base of their opponent's ramps and they'll usually go void ray but sometimes go immortal with prism and cheese their opponent. We see this against zerg a lot of times in conjunction with the cannon rush to deny the natural and contain zerg. We see this with the void where the stargate will be proxied at the third and the protoss just stays on one base the whole time and the void ray is used to break down the front door in conjunction with gateway units. Very boring, very banal, very easy to execute, not fun to play against, really not even fun to do, because the micro, it's not like doing, like if, uh, for instance, a one base build where you chronoed out two immortals in a prism and did like a four gate and like juggled the immortals to try to kill your opponent. That would be an example of like an all in that was fun to micro and would be fun to watch. <laughs> Making four void rays and camping them over shield batteries as you kill add-ons is skillless and not fun to watch. It is a just talentless, boring cheese that is actually easier to execute than a cannon rush. It's way more forgiving than a cannon rush. A lot of people think of a cannon rush to be like the very base level of Protoss cheese, but this is actually easier. It's more forgiving. The cannon rush is more nuanced and more related to map knowledge and knowing how your opponent reacts and see scouting information. This is just the sort of shit that even if your opponent knows it's coming, you can still sort of do and get away with a lot. It's pretty ridiculous. So I think the battery in general has been a bad change for the game. I feel like Protoss is way less fun to play against post Mothership Core, which is something I never thought I would be saying. Because the Mothership Core was like this really powerful god unit Protoss really had to play around. Well, that's better than every Nexus having recall and the defensive and offensive, especially offensive, capability of the shield battery. It used to be where ZVP especially was a lot more about maneuvering Protoss and hiding scouting information and sort of seeing what tech they're going and then dictating what you were going to do and then pulling their army away and attacking another side. 
a lot of this stuff has just been taken out of the game with battery recall. And it's very frustrating and boring to be in these late game TVPs, especially when the Protoss is going mass air and they're just buttoned up everywhere because they have three batteries and maybe a cannon. This is especially bad in 2v2 and I'll talk about this more when we get to the Void Ray, which we might as well just talk about now. The Void Ray got nerfed, the build time was increased, and the mineral cost was in uh, increased. Which is good, because even though the in the pro scene, the Void Ray has sort of had this trajectory where it was used some in Wings, and then not very much for Hoths and some of Legacy, and it was joked a lot, joked about a lot by Testosis. Then we saw a huge resurgence when people started being aggressive with batteries. Well, really what this comes down to is this was a pretty skillless, boring unit that was used exclusively in one base cheeses, and they were really tired of this proxy void ray battery build, and basically the biggest point of this whole patch is to kill that build, which is good because it was garbage and not fun to watch. But I want to talk a bit about 2v2 because even though the game is balanced for 1v1 as it should be, I really like 2v2 and play a lot of 2v2. So the thing about 2v2 is it's always been a game type where air has been spammed a lot and you see the sort of reliance on void rays and that sort of turtle just spam air play without scouting. It's gotten so bad over the past year, it's virtually unplayable, the 2v2 ladder. If you play Protoss, every PvP is going to be air versus air. If you play Zerg, what are you going to do? Do Hydra bust and hope that their ally doesn't help them? go straight to Corruptor, which died a Void Rays anyway? No, it's terrible, so this change will actually help the 2v2 server more than anything. The DT, they now have a delay after they blink. This is interesting because I never really thought this was a problem. Whenever they were first introducing DT blink, whenever it was announced, everyone was up in arms and kvetching and very upset because people were like, my god, DTs with Blink, it's going to be so obnoxious, how are we ever going to catch them? And then Protoss players just didn't make the upgrade, Shadow Stride, for months and months. And there was a Protoss player in Nightmare, who like, in a GSL, in the first round of a GSL match, got it on a two base all in with Speed Zealots, and blinked on top of a bunker to bust a really good Terran player and upset him. And then people really saw that and started to use them more. But in general, this was not something in my play that I ever found abused or I ever thought was annoying. Whenever this was announced, people thought like, oh, people are going to run DTs in and then like blink, like I'm going to have three DTs in my main and they're all going to blink off in different directions. One's going to go to my natural, one's like going to go to my ramp, one's going to like hide in the corner and it's just going to be a fucking nightmare to catch DTs. That's not what happened. What actually happened is people realized you could just get DT blink and then in conjunction with your normal speed zealot plus whatever army you could blink the DTs on top of your opponent's army and because DTs do so much damage with that gap close it was just a crushing amount of damage that would one shot a lot of stuff especially Terran units Terran bio is what this was really good against and god forbid if your opponent didn't have a detector they would just be gap closed on and lose the fight really badly you didn't really see this that much, but I think Blizzard wants to eliminate the idea of like uh, 12 DTs blink in and just shred everything. And we can see in this patch with the Widowmind change, they're taking another step in the direction of we want it, the game to be less, they want the game to be a little more forgiving and less like if you look away for a second everything dies. It was like, I definitely feel like in Legacy of the Void with Speed Boost and the Drilling Claw Widow Mines and the Oracle and all these aggressive options and like the new Nidus that if you're not paying attention for a second, it's been way easier to lose a StarCraft game and not recover than it's ever been. And this, just, this has always been like a cutthroat game that's like that. There's always been elements of this game. Of, there's always been elements. I almost fucking fell out of my chair. There's always been elements of StarCraft that are like that, but it's gotten like ridiculous in Legacy with like Mind Drop and Oracle. Think about if you're like a gold or lower player. Imagine the amount of times those poor bastards like are like trying to macro or like doing an attack and they look in their base and like their whole mineral line's gone. 
way faster than it would have been for us like in the Wings of Liberty era. Before like mines and boost and hellbats. Playing TVP if your opponent knows what they're doing and you're Protoss is brutal. Especially uh, dropping Bio Terran who uses mines. Think this think about the style Maru uses in GS Silver as Protoss. Where he'll literally mind drop for like three straight minutes. The mind drop for a lot of people is like a gimmick, the like proxy effect. They'll try to sneak the mines in. They'll attack at the front and then try to drop the mines because the mine drop is so good. It's one of those things that has been a part of the Terran arsenal for a long time. So people will tinker with it and try to figure out a way to make it better, like incorporating it in a proxy play and stuff like that. Well, like. Maru realized it wasn't about like the gimmick of the first mind drop that Protoss is like halfway anticipating. It's about keeping up the mind harass because the mind drops are so fucking good. It's not just one thing you do is like a cheese and then transition. Like you have the factory with reactor, sometimes even two fact. Your mana make metabacks for your bio. Just keep mind dropping. And the players who play like that and will consistently mind drop throughout the game, obviously they're not going to be as good as Maru, but the ones who employ that drop heavy style are so hard and annoying to play against. And again, it's one of those things where like, I can play against that and like I can counter that style. But for anyone below like Diamond League, like multi-prong drop mind harass will make you want to fucking not play 1v1. And like there are a lot of things in StarCraft now that are like that, that are just like, oh, everything's dead that fast, huh? Didn't used to be like that in Wings. Remember, if you go back and watch a Wings of Liberty game from my Venomous Classic series, the game scaled way slower. Go back and watch a Heart of the Swarm game, especially the TVZs. The last video I uploaded, the Innovation Game vs. Life, that's a perfect example. They're fighting back and forth, having like very impactful engagements for six minutes straight. This is not something that we really see anymore. There's like a lot of predictable, pedantic, boring shit that is borderline inconsequential. Like the Reaper going against Zerg, like the four Hellions against Zerg. It's just, it's nothing is gonna happen and then they scale up for their big attack and they do it and then it's another like build up period. The metagame was so boring. So, we see the queen here get nerfed, and it can no longer transfuse off creep, which it's always brutal when the queen gets nerfed, it's literally Zerg's most important unit. And what's interesting is this was because people were doing these abusive air styles with shield batteries, and the only way Zergs could beat them without going into these ostentatious 45 minute like fucking viper fest games, or idiotically just try to go straight into corruptor, hope they don't make a void ray lol. If Zerg didn't want to do these games, they would do like these two or three base like bust plays that incorporated a bunch of queens. Oftentimes walking off, like they would spend a good like minute of the push walking off creep and it was called the queen walk. And then all the queens would get there often with Hydra Ling and then the queens would spam transfuse and it would be like a bust play to break an, a Protoss air player. Well, I guess Blizzard got tired of that. They're sort of saying like ZVP being based around like air and the Void Ray and these boring fucking Stargate games where Zerg can't do anything. We want to break that. And like Blizzard has always sort of had a problem with the Queen being able to go off creep and be effective. Almost no one remembers this. Back in the early Wings of Liberty days, the Queen was way faster off of creep and it actually got nerfed because people were using it aggressively in ZBZ. Remember, these maps were like Steps of War and Blistering Sands and stuff, so it's not as ridiculous as you think. And obviously, once you get to the other guy's creep, it's effective again. But Blizzard said like, well, we don't, we don't want the queen to be used that way aggressively. So they nerfed the queen speed basically down to like nothing off of creep. I think it was worse than it is now. But what we saw was because the queen was worse at the time, it had like three ground range, the fact that it was slower off of creep made Zerg even more flimsy. And that was a big balance patch early on in Wings of Liberty that had a significant effect 
on the Zerg metagame of the first part of Wings of Liberty being very flimsy, very hard for Zerg, very Terran favored, and Zergs would just die to all sorts of stuff, and no one would really bring that up or talk about that. It's like they nerfed the queen for ZVZ, but it made it where if you had queens trying to walk between your main and natural for all these ridiculous pushes that could occur, again, see the Venomous Classic series, which I'll link, or you had a queen that was trying to walk out to a third from your natural, or a queen that was just outspreading creep. Oh my gosh, like if they attacked or were harassing, the queen was gone. Like the queens were so worthless back then, so... I would say that the queen and the infester are the two units with Zerg that have had the most impact on the metagame, as far as their strength and how Zerg has been affected. So the queen can no longer transfuse off of creep, but listen folks, those like those queen pushes that people did where they obviously some of them are low econ but where a lot of those where they just walked all the queens those are sort of poorly executed here's how you do those pushes and make them work after this patch you do the old school 2011 greg idra field style hydra push where you you have all your overlords placed in an attack path to your opponent's natural and you have them all creep drop, creating a creep highway to circumvent the lack of speed. Also, and this is honestly more easy, I saw True do this, and obviously a lot of other people have done this, where they go for that bust play against a Protoss going air, <coughs> have Hydra Queen, they make a couple uh, over dropper lords, they make a couple dropper lords, and load the four queens into the dropper lords, and then th the push gets there at once and then they just drop the queens out of the dropper lords all you have to do then is have the dropper lords drop creep creep and then if you're smart as soon as the push hits and the creep drops you have eight queens that just drop from the overlord so they're going to be right there you insta lay a tumor and that's just a, it'll be it'll make the uh, it'll make the build a little harder to execute than just a moving a bunch of fucking queens and spamming transfuse but that's a way you can still do that build. What's funny to me is like Blizzard has access to all the pro games and every single like uh, server side ladder stat and every player's replays and they have the ability to sort of shift the meta in a way that can be interesting for esports and is fun to watch. And in the past we've seen this or at least seen them try it, you know. And for two years it was just fucking void ray fest and shield battery rushes some of the most skillless boring rushes imaginable and i think it's an important distinction to make you have rushes that get popular and it takes skill like the blink stalker rush like a, probably like a year and a half ago when parting made round of four in gsl and showed that build versus terran that like two base five gate blink stalker pressure he made perfect, he really made that work with perfect micro. Like there is no perfect micro to building shield batteries at your opponent's fucking ramp. And then like, oh, my void ray is getting low, I better fly back. Because like you can't get burst down really. Like there's no risk in that sense. So it's just that, the fact that they addressed that is really good. Like that needed to be addressed and I'm, on a personal level, even though it's not important for esports, I'm so glad the void ray got nerfed because 2v, the 2v2 ladder was straight up unplayable. If you were Zerg, forget about it. If you were Terran, you kind of had a chance, but, you know, who wants to sit there and go, like, in every single, literally every single game where there is a Protoss in the 2v2, which is almost always, go like, all right, my starport just finished, time to make, like, double Viking so I can blind counter what I know will be air. And you think about it, well, like, oh, well, Venomous Stare, there might not be a Protoss in every 2v2. Oh great, then there'll be a Terran or a Zerg and you get to play a fucking mirror match, which is worse. It's awful. This game needed a patch so bad. So, this queen can't transfuse off creep. It's a nerf to like gimmick plays, like Nidus plays and uh, queen walk and stuff like that. Most of that is only a response to the metagame being fucked up. Like, Zergs were never really going to be doing queen walk hydra bust on a Protoss third unless the air was unplayable. Really what this comes down to is the late game air scenarios favor Protoss so hard with the recall to every base and the power of the battery. It's so hard to do big lean counter attacks and backdoor with Nidus and stuff like this 
which was the way you countered these big Protoss death armies while you teched up to Viper, and then when you did fight, you would have a Nidus or a counterattack ready. Now, oh, it's just so forgiving, so unfun to play with and against, which, as I've said before, is the gold standard for if a game is bad or a metagame is bad or a, like a sort of composition or whatever because it's like if it's unfun to play with and against it just fucking sucks like it needs to be fixed like the unkillable nidus great example the the burrowed infestors when they could throw the fungal from underground great example garbage the swarm host every iteration great example so the widow mines the effectiveness of drilling claws has been nerfed this just means when a Terran comes screaming in with a mine drop, the mines are going to burrow a little less quickly. Which, if you were right on top of it, and you were a pro gamer, and you focus fired perfectly, and had perfect unit allocation, and you were ready for it, you could stop a mine from going off. But God forbid if you weren't like one of those ten players in the fucking world, you were going to take some damage. And what was so irritating is you could, you could defend it pretty well and kill three of the mines and one of them would go off and kill eight workers and it was just like okay i'm behind and i knew what he was doing and i was ready so they're nerfing that down a bit to sort of make it less damning that's really the only thing that'll have an effect on this won't have an effect on like mutiling baneling tvz yeah it just won't okay they're nerfing the lurker in the same way the, the and remember these are the speed upgrades on both. So like this is after you've gotten the drilling call upgrade and after you've gotten adaptive talon. You know when you get adaptive talon, the lurker is just like comedically insta burrow. They're nerfing that down. Same with like the mines. Like once you get the drilling claws, like they burrow pretty quick. It feels like real quick if it's in your damn mineral line. But they're basically ma making that less damning, and that sort of a uh, change in the vein of. This is going to be less of a game where if you look away for a second, everything can die, which is good because it had gone too far in that direction. So Nidus Worm, increased starting creep one unit each uh, direction the worm spawns. This just means if you do Nidus strats, lead with the queen and put a creep, you insta put a creep tumor down. So if you're doing like a, a I'm gonna sneak a Nidus in his base with a bunch of queens and lings, one of those like corny early game builds, like an early game Nidus Cheese. It, do, it, it means that you're gonna have to like lay the tumor down and wait. You can't just walk all the queens in at once and attack that way. So Nidus Abuse has been nerfed, which is good. Nidus is really obnoxious. And really the crux of the issue of this patch is the shield battery being nerfed and the void ray being nerfed. So if you liked the video, make sure to subscribe.